Welcome to the fourth episode of the District 7 Podmasters Toastmasters podcast. My name is Ray, and if you want to learn about podcasting or you have an idea for a podcast you want to produce, look up our club. Our goal is to help Toastmasters learn how to develop the tools and skills to explore their curiosity in this interesting medium in a fun and entertaining way. First introduction I'm going to make is my co-host, who is Bob Hall, and he is on the screen to see you now. And he's going to be helping me with these with these interviews going forward. And I'm looking forward to all of the extra experience he can bring to help this as well. And now I'm going to introduce our guest. Speaking of fun and entertaining, we have a conversation today with Kathy Jorgensen, who is the past youth leadership and speech craft chair for District 84. Hello, Kathy. Hello, both of you, Ray and Bob. How are you doing nice. tonight? I'm doing absolutely fabulous. Thank you so much for being here today. And Pleasure. I have a cup. I have a couple of general questions to start off with your experience in Toastmasters. And then we'll move on to some of the work you've been and continue doing with Toastmasters. Are you ready for today's discussion? I hope so. I there hope is so an editing too. process that you have. So that gives me. Mm -hmm. My, yeah. my oh. process is, is part made up to be absolutely perfect and absolutely not perfect ever. Anytime. <laughs> Okay. But, so let's co-create together. Bob, are you ready to get going? I am absolutely ready. Bob, thank you very much. I'm ready to get started. My first question for you for today's, uh, for Kathy, is I wanted to ask you a question. Have you ever had a table topics prompt that inspired a really interesting answer or an interesting speech that followed from that? Whoa, good question. I have been I have been following that blue ribbon best table topics since I've been in Toastmasters. I have never won it. I cannot say one time, but there have been many times when they talk about what has been your favorite journey in Toastmasters or in your life or did you ever work or something like that? And so there have been a lot of speeches. I haven't been speaking so much this last year because I'm trying to get everybody else to speak. But yeah, table topics is fascinating. I, I love hearing all the different answers. So to be more precise, that's about as precise as I can be. Or else I have to go into my, into my filing cabinet. We don't have the time for that. The whole idea of that question is really just to pull out whatever the first memory that comes to mind is. I've had some really interesting answers to that question, and I look forward to hearing more of them. If one occurs to you while we're having our discussion for no reason whatsoever, feel free to interject and be like, you know, I remember this one. And that's perfectly fine, too. We have no rules here. We have no timer. But... Now, with that in mind, uh, I'd like to ask uh, my next question is just specifically about how you joined Toastmasters. And I want you to share or could you share when you joined Toastmasters? And do you remember the reason for joining when you did? Absolutely. I was my husband and I moved over from Europe in two. Well, actually, yeah, 2018. And I love Pilates. I was at a Pilates class, made friends with this young woman who was a member of Toastmasters. Now, her and her husband are professional travelers as uh, Coleman Concierge. So I'll give her a plug. She's the one responsible for me being here. Uh, that Thursday, I went, We it was just across the street at the library, and I went there and... It was like, oh, I can join here and not be embarrassed, not be, in morti not be mortified about speaking. And I joined that night 
And so it was in November 18, uh, 2018. And I haven't looked back and I learned, you know, just say yes, just say yes to everything. So I wasn't even able to say my name hardly. They said, please stand up and say your name. And I don't think I stood up. And if I did, my legs were water. And then the, you know, just saying, just being um, like a timer or a grammarian or something like that. I couldn't do that for like three months. I didn't give my icebreaker until three months later. And then I had a friend that was going to drag me up there and walk me up like a two-year-old. And I was ready for that, but I thought, okay, well, maybe I should go up on my own. And that was my icebreaker. So I was standing there like this with my notes. And after that, it was, uh, there was another woman that said, do what scares you. I took it to heart and I've tried to follow that, that motto. You know, I can remember instances early in my career when I was called to talk to the Colonel terrified legs shaking <laughs> yep. I, I have a daughter who is um developmentally delayed who is a member of toastmasters now and she's blossoming i have another daughter who is a bipolar and as a teenager she was terrified of even going into mcdonald's to order a hamburger we got her involved in speech and debate and she blossomed too, learning how to speak in front of total strangers. So, you know, what you're involved in, uh, in this youth leadership thing, boy, I've seen so many benefits in my own life. And I would like, I'm just looking forward to hearing you expand on that, uh, that aspect of it. Absolutely. It's been a good uh, journey. It's been fun. Yeah. I, like I have my notes and we've been talking about you are the youth leadership, well, past youth leadership chair and past speechcraft chair for, for Toastmasters District 84. How did those roles come to you? Like oh. what, what moment said, hey, you should, you should do this? There was another thing of, hey, we need a uh, speechcraft and youth leadership chair who's going to raise their hand. And, and I did. And that's all it took. Edith Tink, and I don't know if you all know her, she had to get, she wanted her DTM. So she did a speech craft event and asked me to join her. And I did. And it wasn't so much for the adults that I realized how beneficial it would be, though it was. But after that, I thought, you know, this is going to be really cool for kids. And that's when, you know, is because I think the brain is just a fascinating. OK, we're all here with our little disabilities. I wouldn't call them disabilities. Let's just say quirks of our character. And I just think it, it helps so much because there's so much pressure that wasn't that's not not your aunt that's not the answer to that question see there i went off on rambling <laughs> it was just you know someone asked me someone asked me um our uh district director says hey we need one i raised my hand and i just took off and my goal was to and it was sort of floundering at that time uh, because i mean usually the people it takes a lot of work i don't work and the people that had been doing it were working. They had families. And you know that's a lot of obligations. And so my goal was to have every kid, every classroom with youth leadership group. I wanted, I wanted parents involved. I wanted these children involved. And just synchronicity, I've had the best luck of meeting the most amazing people that saw this as a benefit for the kids. Now, yes, it's wonderful. I think that every kid that does this, I think their parents should come in with them. But you know, you can't tell mom and dad, come on, your kid's gonna be learning a lot. And so that's not possible, but it's just amazing to see the transformation that takes place with these children, these students, no matter the age group, no matter the age group. Why does that resonate with me? I mean, that's what I, that's what I love about Toastmasters. You get a new member coming in 
and they can't get 30 seconds in, in the first table topics and they say boy that's harder than i thought it was going to be yeah six months later they're giving speeches and they're super confident i i just love that aspect of toastmasters yeah oh, yeah absolutely well i know one of my mentors was a what was a youth leadership chair in my district and she worked with a group of air cadets she speaks highly of her experience and, and like some of the people that were in her in her group in her youth leadership program went on to to compete at quite high levels within within air cadets and within toastmasters within gavel clubs and things like that and they found it hugely rewarding experience i had a i, I had a thought and, and uh, there was another one of my icebreaker questions that i kind of rolled over and i'll probably end up coming back with it but what were some surprises that you found in your role something that you weren't expecting and that really had a big impact how many one of the first youth leadership groups that i did was with this colleague of mine, Sal Sharp, and we did a STEM school. And most of these kids were autistic on some level or had some sort of, uh, they were challenged mentally um, to varying degrees. And I get goosebumps right now thinking about this. And all of the kids had their own way of participating. And, but there was this one young woman, in fact, there were two, but this one young woman, it would take, you would ask her a question and it would take her two or three minutes to answer. But at the end of it, when you give them that, that last week, you know, it's the celebration. You're, you're actually, uh, what do you say, graduating from this. And she actually spoke. She spoke. And I mean, you have no idea. My heart was just, you know, oh my God, I was just, it was just like winning the prize, winning the lottery or something. And wow. so after that, and then you get other people that like I have, uh, I hope they don't mind me saying their name, but with the community center in Winter Park, there was a gentleman, uh, Sylvester Terry, who used to be a Toastmaster. And he, I don't know how we got involved. He heard about me or something, but we chatted and we started getting uh, for the group there because there's a bunch of kids there. They're not, you know, they don't have a lot of opportunities. And he wanted the youth leadership for these kids. And so I'm. there was, uh, happens to be CEO, I think it's CEO Toastmasters. Oh, I, oh gosh, they're gonna kill me if I say that wrong. But one woman, Kathleen Lekudu, Lekudu, oh my goodness, butchering her name too, but she used to be a principal or counselor for a grade school. And she took over the youth leadership. She didn't take it over, but she started doing all of these different classes. And it's just, you know, you hear all of these stories. You hear these stories where these kids are blossoming and it just helps so much. You know it's going to help down the line. How much, you know, you you realize how did it help you? How did it help your daughter? You know, oh when you gosh. have that confidence inside of you and you have that energy and you have the ability to know, you know, I found my voice. I don't have to be afraid anymore. I don't have to listen to everybody that's trying to tell me, oh, you can't do this or you can't do that. I can do it. And that's what, that's, I get on a soapbox there and <laughs> I just get, because there's so much. You're giving me goosebumps. <laughs> <laughs> well, the interesting thing you know, about this, yeah. the soapbox is a stage and we're all used to being on stages. Like yeah. it's, it, it's, it, it is a tool that I think everybody needs is this, is public speaking, is being able to understand and share their stories. Wow. And and you imagine you go through your entire life and never get asked to tell your story. I mean, being a late diagnosed ADHD person in my case, it's like going through the first 40 years of my life being left handed and never knowing that there are left handed scissors. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's kind of like that. 
and and you actually kind of are you already covered a little bit of uh, the the naming names part of things and I didn't want you to name names for for any of the youth that you were working with but was there any youth in your group that or did I ask this question already surprised yourself or surprised them with their their experience in the program well there you know the the at the stem school that was pretty amazing and I mentioned Edith Tinkin a while ago well um there's a gentleman, Donald Tolson, that a mother calls me. Okay, let me back up. A mother calls me. She says, I want this youth leadership for my son. Okay, well, he happened to be a member of this. It's the, uh, it's a specific, I know, I know my brain. It's a specific, it's, the young men of black distinction. And so there were like 20 or 30 men. And I went to the graduation. Donald was their, uh, what do you call it, coordinator. And it was just amazing watching. I was able to see them in the beginning and then at the graduation. They were so proud. And when he gave them that certificate of completion, they were so proud. And you know, it just does something. You you can go through all of these different courses and everything, but I think, you know, you you pay thousands of dollars to go to some of these classes. You you know, you pay all of these therapists for your kids and everything. Send them to a youth Toastmasters youth leadership thing, you know, and I mean, it's for everybody. And um, you have another question for me. And it's about neurodiversity later on. We'll get into that, too. We will get into that. And oh. in fact, it, it, interestingly enough, I have a couple of questions that come in on uh, come into that world. Did you notice anything um, markedly different between the youth leadership and the speech craft when you were dealing with adults? Or did you get some of the same revelations or experiences out of that? It was actually, well, now you have to also, um, the speech craft, you can have four weeks, six weeks, eight weeks, or 12 weeks. Yeah. And with the youth leadership, it's 12 weeks. It is, you have to do 12 weeks. Uh, I've done, been involved with three or, I can't recall, three or four speech craft. And when we first started, the people were like us, or like me anyway. You know, it was as if I'd someone had sewed my mouth together, and now they can't shut me up. But these kids, or these adults, at the end of the four weeks, were giving these amazing speeches. It was like, wow! It was it was uh, taking down these walls, and it also helped them because they were all wanting, some of them were working in the laundry section. Some of them were in the, uh, well, all over security, laundry, and I don't know what you call that. What do you call it? Housekeeping. And, you know, we all want to get ahead in life. And they used these as these stepping stones. And they did. They were able to uh, progress. They were able to get promotions. They were able to just step up or maybe even quit, I don't know. This The only thing that bothered me a bit was, or not bothered me, but I was um, sad that a lot of them didn't stay connected so I could follow up because I asked all of them, you know, hey, how did you do? How, you know, how did this help you? And no one answered, no one responded to my letters. And I sent a couple out and I thought, okay, now it's just stalking them, so I better stop. So, but that was, it was, you know, I think it's more significant, The you're able to see it more in the adults than you do the children, because you can't really follow up with the children. And, but, you know, it would be so cool to know, like in 10 years, how did it help? And also with adults. Well, yeah. I mean, I, I, I can honestly say from my perspective, I've been in Toastmasters for 10 years now, and 
I would characterize my experience for the last 10 years very differently now than I would have had you asked me five years ago what that same experience was. Or even if you'd asked me like after the first two years what that experience was is it just continues to add and add and add. Um, add to my experience, add to my confidence, add to the way I share all of those things. And I think maybe even a year after I got started in it, did my first five or six or seven speeches, if anybody had asked me what it had done for me, I really don't know that I would have had a strong answer. It's something that has a lot of lag, but it continues to compound over time and over time and over time until you realize that, wait a minute, you know, you know what, easy. you know what, it, you know what it is. Toastmasters is like having a gym membership. Yeah, it's a practice. You go into the gym every week. You don't notice the changes after two or three months. You keep going every week, and then a couple of years later, you say, "Oh wow, now I can see the difference." And you got to keep. Color. You've got to keep doing it. It's a very good analogy. It is a very good analogy. I wish you could almost say it again so the ringer doesn't cut it off, but that's all right. We can leave it we can leave it in and it can be a lesson learned, uh, which is which is good. What I, I did want to ask and I, I mentioned in text in discussions preparing for this that, you know, I found it really interesting that you've got some of the dyslexia and ADHD part of things, which I definitely have been exploring in the last couple of years because I wasn't diagnosed with either of those until my late 30s and early 40s. But um, so I know I there's a there, what's that? I was 60. You were 60? You you have been 60? Is this, is this something that you're telling us now? You have been 60. That's uh, okay. I didn't realize you were. You, 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 you. Well, actually, no, actually, no, it was 65. I learned when I was 65. We've been here six, uh, five years. So I was, wow. I was 65. Yeah. Well, for me, my my neurologist, brief A side, my neurologist, because I also have MS, um, was looking at some of my symptoms and said, I think you might have ADHD. So talk to your doctor about that. And this is 20 or 18 years after getting diagnosed with MS, my neurologist is telling me this. And sure enough, yep, <laughs> yep, I do. And it's like, oh, wow, blinders come off. And I realize I, a lot of those challenges were explainable to more than just yeah. me. But that yeah. was one of the things I wanted to touch on uh, asking a question about is I'm sure some or many of the kids of the youth leadership uh, youth you worked with and even maybe the adults you worked with would have had some of the elements of ADHD, some of the challenges that come with dyslexia and language processing and things like that. So I know perhaps they don't even understand the, the strength that's coming through it. Do you have any techniques or experience that you might point to to help break help them break through some of those barriers? I technically know because I do not have the education. All I can do is present the speech craft program now and and truly basically my job after doing it two or three times, I think I did it twice. And then I find other people to actually be coordinators for these programs. So the STEM school was my first foray into being um, the speed or the youth leadership group chair. And, but to answer your question, I think, I really think that a lot of it goes so undiagnosed. The kids are not like when I was a kid, I was always in trouble for talking too much. I couldn't sit still and not pay attention. Kathy will not pay attention. Kathy has the potential, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so it went undiagnosed, but then you wonder, okay, why am I, wh what's with all of this, you know, the depression and all of that kind of stuff. And so you think, okay, putting this stuff on you about all these other kids and then lining up and just giving them drugs 
Well, I think it's important. That's why I'm thinking it's important for the parents to also go through this. Let's mm -hmm. recognize that all kids are different. If they have extra energy, is it because they're just, you know, kids are curious. Mm -hmm. They have questions. But a lot of the parents are so, you know, they're so busy with work. They're so busy with their job or with their jobs. That's redundant work jobs and trying to put food on the table. They're single parents and they, you know, they, they've been dealing with their bosses all day and they, and they come home at night and their children are just glad to see them. And mm. I'm going off on another tangent. These things happen. But, it's all right. <laughs> it, well, but the thing is, you know, it's so frustrating because it's it's just it goes so much undiagnosed, and so everybody just starts giving them drugs, and, mm. and I think that's why I think that this uh, youth leadership is such a wonderful program, because it gives them this idea that hey, look, I'm different, I'm okay. Exactly. It's okay. It's that's okay. The that's in in a lot of the adhd forums that i'm a part of that's really one of the big lines that i bring back to them is is it is it is a trait it is a trait and it is a trait that's inconvenient for some people so they might take it out on you and the medication is useful but medication plus the education is what's required you need yeah. to understand what it's doing and also what to do with it so uh, I'm just wanted wanted to clarify because you've said a, said a couple of times the STEM school. Do you mean that as like the science, technology, engineering, and mathematics school, or yes. do you mean the STEM school as in like autism, stimming, that kind of thing? Exactly what you said the first time. It was okay. a uh, couple that started their own STEM school, and these kids are absolutely brilliant but somewhere on that spectrum and yeah. in fact has asked us uh i well we have a new uh youth uh what do you call it uh club growth director so we have a new chair also mm -hmm. for the speech gap and youth leadership so i connected them up and i've never heard i've asked a couple times but nobody's kathy they're doing it again you know they've gone they've returned but yeah it's the science and technology education math yeah nice well they some of the things that you that you gave gave me in our preparations for this some of the quotes i mean i copied and pasted them into my into my notes app just because i might end up using them on my email quotes later uh fascinated wow. with you. the psychology of the brain when we have more confidence and self-esteem and one for the voiceover end of things, I just, I love the line, imagine giving kids that opportunity to become more focused on their studies and letting the peer pressure of jealous, mean kids, people not affect them so much. Like, the, I love that, that kind of perspective in it, not to quote your own words back to you, although I suppose I just did. <laughs> but, <It's> okay. <laughs> I'm glad it made sense to you it's well my brain is also broken so i understand these are the these are they are not that broken are, our brains are me, not broken let me rephrase that yes my, my brain is unusual in the same way that yeah maybe i'll just cut this part of it out because it doesn't it, it, now my now i'm doing on a little weird like sides everybody's unusual. unique just like everybody else okay exactly. i'm different just like everybody else <laughs> you know, are you guys, are you all familiar with Jim Quick? I He's am familiar a, with, uh, well, I know the name and I know some of the references of it, but I don't know a whole well, lot. Well, he, he's a gentleman uh, that he's on Mind Valley. But anyway, what happened when he was little, he was in some sort of an accident. And all of a sudden his brain just went, it was gone. He had to learn how to read, write, all of this other kind of stuff. And so he walked up to uh, a classroom one time and his teacher was saying, oh, it's such a shame. His, his little brain is broken. He's broken. And so time went on, but then what happened was he just got tired of hearing it. And he says, I want to learn this. And he taught himself how to speed read. 
he taught himself. And so now he gives all of these classes, the courses on and workshops, how to read. And, and I think that's fascinating. And so when I hear someone say, oh, my brain is broken, because I used to think the same thing. I thought I was mentally challenged. Mm. And some people, my brother might still say, yeah, there's a little bit there. But he's just, you know, trying to get, he's just trying to mess with me. But, you know, a lot of us, I think, and a lot of kids think that because they don't fit into some social parameter, they're not one of the cool kids. They're not one of the nerds. They're not one of these guys, you know. Uh, it's really hard for them to fit in somewhere. Where do I fit in? And I don't think, I think that's a very common thing. You'll hear children now, there's so many young suicides and maybe it has to do with being, uh, you know, they're different. Maybe they're gay. Maybe they're not going down that road at all. But the fact is they feel different inside and they can't get an answer and they go undiagnosed. Well, what's wrong with me? I can't, I don't get along with anybody. They don't read the signals. And then the parents are saying, or no, I'm not, I don't want to blame it on the parents. But I think that these children, when they do a youth leadership program, I think that especially if you have a good coordinator, you can learn, you know what? You don't have to fit in, just be who you are because you're amazing. And that's what I think is the, you know, that's what I think is the nucleus of the youth leadership group, because you find your voice and maybe it doesn't fit in with everybody else, but they're finding their voice and they get to be who they were meant to be, or at least get started. The seeds are being planted. Well, that is a good answer. And I appreciate that perspective. Sometimes really, it gives other people a chance to fit in with you. Yeah. And that's a, that's a thing that whenever we're talking to new speakers and Toastmasters and they're worried that their icebreaker isn't perfect. And I, I, my line is always, you've never done an icebreaker before. Why would you expect to be any good at it? <laughs> it's, it's, ex, it's exactly that. Um, we're getting to the point uh, towards the end of my questions here, and there's a couple of things that I'm trying to implement in, and you're going to be the first, uh, the first recipient of it. But this entire discussion leads into the first, first time I'm actually doing this, which is to um, share a question that was provided by one of our previous guests. In fact, our first guest for my very first ever recorded podcast. Would you like to hear it? Oh, I definitely so. All right. Well, I'm going to share my screen right now. And I am going to share computer sound and all of that fun stuff. And I'm just going to let this play for a second here and let you react to the question because I think it applies to what we were just talking about. Okay. Tell me about a time when you felt overwhelmed and how you handled creating uh, boundaries or delegating some of your work. That's the question from Lila Sieber, who is the current co-editor of the District 7 Voices magazine, which I believe Bob is pretty familiar with because he's in that part of the world as well. Oh boy, that's a very, it's a good question, but it's something that happens, I wouldn't say as often anymore, but even today, I was feeling, no, it was yesterday, I was feeling really overwhelmed, overwhelmed, because I felt like everything I'm doing is just, it's just, you know, it doesn't make sense. What am I doing? Where am I going with this? And I just go meditate. I use meditation. I... 
Yes, 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 I do. And I listen to Marissa Peer, Paul McKenna, and I do tapping too. I do a lot of tapping, EFT, emotional freedom technique. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so I listen to uh, Nick Ordner, gosh, and who's the other one, the guy, the man. Um, I just watched him yesterday because it was, you know, the stress was just, you know, it was just so overwhelming. And, you know, we create our own environment. We create our own world. We create our own stresses and all that kind of stuff. And so the EFT has, it's helped me tremendously. I forget sometimes and I just go down my little rabbit holes and I have my little pity parties and I say, oh yeah, I better do some tapping or let's go back, you know, let's listen to some meditating tapes. And that's the only way I can do it. I, that's just, that's just my go-to thing. The quote yeah. that came to mind for me was, I think it was an Epictetus quote that came up in my mind as you were saying that was we suffer more in imagination than we do in reality. Yes. Yes. And that's yes. an important thing to remember. And I carry a stoic coin around with me that just says Amor Fati or the obstacle is the way. Yes, I have his books. He's amazing. <laughs> I, I, yeah. Oh my now, gosh. Well, before Ooh. we hit our last question, uh, uh, before we hit our, yeah, before we hit the last question of your interview, I want to touch base with Bob and say, is there any questions that are sitting in the top of your mind that you'd like to like to ask as your, your final? Well, first of all, I'd just like to thank our guest for sharing this in incredible journey that she's been on and the life lessons that she's learned. I think this is very instructive for us. Uh, our audience at large, as, as we've uh, remarked here, we're all different. We all have some neurodivergent stuff going on in our brains. I may be good at this. I'm not good at that. And somebody else may be better at this than me. It doesn't mean that there's anything wrong, that I'm broken. It's just that that's the way that I was wired. That's the way that I was built. And that's okay. It's okay to be, to be different. And I think, this is something that, that if like world peace really depends on the answer to this question we get into wars because of this sort of um you know feeling that that this group is different so i'm going to do something to that group or or conquer them or whatever um i think if more people had some empathy along these lines i think i think the world would be a lot more peaceful so i think this is a very important question absolutely so this is the the last question for this interview today and i know you gave me a little bit of insight in, into it in the email but i just i didn't want to actually know the answer to it i wanted to ask the question and give you the give you the opportunity to do this because we are here for two reasons First one is to explore your Toastmasters experience, and the second is to tell us what you're working on this year. So, can you tell us a little bit about your current project, or if you're going, if we're going to see your name up in lights sometime soon? What's what? What oh. is your? What are you pitching for today? Well, I just. There's three things going on, and I know that our Dr. Martinez would not, uh, she would be very upset with me if I didn't say it, but oh, uh, it's not here. Oh, darn it. Um, my book, I just published my book. It's The Beauty of Imperfection Through Toastmasters. I've learned that I don't have to be perfect. And that was my goal through all of this. I have to show you the cover. Wait just a sec. Well, you can text me a picture of it and I'll put it in the oh, It's right here. Oops. <laughs> show you. Uh, and the <laughs> other thing is, the other thing that I want to show you are, um, um, what do you call it? It's this, The Beauty of Imperfection. Nice. But also, Maria, Dr. 
Dr. Martinez has put together along with uh, Nick Patterson, Sal Sharp, you heard me speaking of her before, we, she's put together an educational summit. And Ray, I know you have that stuff. I sent it to you already in uh, an email. It's the 28th of October from 10 o'clock to one o'clock our time EST. And it's going to be, oh my God, I think there's 20, 26 speakers. No, it has to be even because there's all even across. 24, there's something like that, speakers. And I, and I see myself and um, another colleague from Lens Masters, it's a photography club. We will be speaking on how to publish or publishing your book, photo book. And, but there is Jenny Liu. I believe you know Jenny Liu from Neurodiversity. It's a neurodiversity website, uh, Toastmasters Club. If you do not know her, I will send you that address because they're all about neurodiversity. Nice. And then of course, the other thing I'm working on is a Toastmasters book. I'm trying to collect, well, I, ha I have about 22. I'd love to have some more is um, a Toastmasters book telling stories. How did you get into Toastmasters? Why are you in Toastmasters? Why do you stay? Uh, you know, just things like that. So I would love to have your stories. Just send them to me. <laughs> Paul, and, I, yes. I, I yeah. think that is, I think, I think that can certainly be arranged. And from this video, if I do some creative editing of, of all of this stuff, maybe I could have like a two minute, two minute video just to say, you know, here, <laughs> Kathy saying, give me your stories. And then you can have it in YouTube shorts and it shows up in everybody's algorithm. Who knows? We can do all those. Wow. Well, wow. uh, so the I think I think stories for a very long time. The yeah. Final thing I want, uh, the, the final thing I want from you before I end the recording is I did ask you to give me a, uh, to, to give a question, stare right into the camera and give the question for the next guest. That's an easy one. And cut. Thank you so much, Kathy, for being a part of this fourth interview project, this, this, uh, this experiment that has been going on for a couple of months, being part of the fourth episode of the Podmasters podcast. And I hope to see you in upcoming events and I'll look for your book as it becomes published and all of that. Bye. Well, the one's already on Amazon, so you can check me out on Amazon and we'll see what happens with the next one. But the event, the uh, summit, like I say, the 28th, I did put that out there for you. So if you could put that on your website, that would just be more than wonderful. Maria would just love that. And all you have to do right is register. Yes, 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 please do. It was such an honor and pleasure. Thank you for inviting me. I've enjoyed this a lot. It's fun. It but I, I fun. think the youth leadership group, I, I just, you know, there's so much value. And I talk more about that than I do the speech craft, because I think if we can catch them younger, we wouldn't have all the problems we do now. Just as I'm wrapping up the editing for this video before it posts, I feel it's important to remind you that Podmasters is a club that hasn't chartered yet. So we meet on the first and third Sundays of each month. We're looking for members who want to create podcasts or want to support podcasts or maybe even do some of the technical stuff. The contact information to get a hold of us is right next to me here. And I hope to see you in an upcoming meeting. Also, we've got more interviews coming up scheduled in the works keep an eye on those thanks bye